Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. It's a pleasure to me to be here. My first time in FAO. Dan, for inviting, thank you. Uh, my name is Henrique Blake, I'm from Brazil. And is, uh, my challenge is to explain in 10 minutes how Brazil is so, so developed in this regulatory biocontrol aspects. And so direct to the point, let me check here the something presenting. Okay. So uh, Brazilian pesticide legislation uh, has changed in last year, but we have the same basis uh, around more than 30 years we have the, the last regulation and nowadays this new law established some more specific standards but it doesn't cause us problem with the biological products both are in the same law but the decree for 400 for 74 since 2002 is applicable whenever uh, compatible with this new law. The, um, it's important to say that we have um, three pillars of our legislation basic on agronomy efficiency, human health and environmental. These three, three bodies uh, has uh, his own responsibility and we don't have hierarchy between them. So each one uh, make the, the, the work uh, specifically, like a MAPA, that is the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, study the evaluation of pesticide efficacy, and uh, Human Health is National Health Surveillance Agency, is responsible for evaluating the safety of pesticides for public health, and our Brazilian Institute of Environmental and Renewable Natural Resources, IBAMA, is responsible for evaluating the impact of pesticides on ecosystems and biodiversity and water quality. So we work together with uh, some meetings, uh, weekly meetings together to discuss the standards, to discuss new products, and so we have a, a joint meetings to, to decide some new aspects about the, this subject. Specifically for registration basic products, uh, we have the classification, a different classification uh, between microbiological and macrobiological for biocontrol agents like insects but it's in the same rule, in the same uh, way of register and they both there need to be the, the efficiency must be proven for uh, accredited uh, research institution public or private ones the so the, the efficacy in controlling biological targets are uh, analyzed the toxicological risk and both are classified as low environmental impact products the same for semiochemical, phytochemical, or biochemical, some vegetable extracts are classified in the same, in, in the same uh, low environmental impact products. So we, we have the, this same uh, way, pathway of register for both products. We have the conventional way that it's more common for pesticides in general. So it's uh, the complete uh, way to, to register the products. But we have a second way that is the by comparison. So when some, there is some similar product in the market already registered and provided that there is no legal protection of the, the information, so in this situation, the agronomic testing and residue studies are not necessary. So the register is by comparison. And the third one, since 2009, we start a new decree 
that established the re reference specification. So maybe because of this, we have so much pro products um, registered in this way. The, it starts ex exclusively for the pest control products for approved or for organic farming, but there is no restriction to use in conventional farming. So because of this, the, the farmers identified the opportunity to, to use these products and it uh, gave us this uh, approach of sustainability. Particularly in this situation, uh, safety and efficiency assessments are conducted during the establishment of the reference specification. So during the registration process, it uh, are complete, are done. So the time to, to register this kind of product reduce to from uh, more than one year to less 60, six months. Around six months we register nowadays a new, a new product based on uh, reference specification. Uh, in general, instruction for use is the same. Uh, we demand in Brazil the, uh, an agronomic prescription for to in general for pesticides that could be uh, in, in case of uh, low, low risk products, this prescription or microbiological products, this prescription could not be necessary. So this is the difference but the label and leaflet instructions need to be complete for each one. It's important that the information uh, regarding uh, the mode of use, target pass, timing, number of applications, doses, and other recommendations that, that bodies could uh, ask for or demand to include in the, the label flat. It's important to say that it's an agronomic recommendation, it's uh, important. Okay, just to give some ideas about numbers. So here we have the number of uh, registered products just for in this uh, low risk uh, category that includes biological, microbiological, semiochemical, plant extract, uh, growth regulators and in general, phytosanitary products for organic agriculture. So we can see that from 2009, uh, when it starts the, this uh, specification, uh, we grow in the last uh, five years, we have uh, a lot of new products uh, registered in this low risk category. Here we can give some more uh, idea about, uh, about this concepts because maybe this could uh, help us to understand the Brazil situation because for products that contain microorganisms that positively influence plant growth are classified as inoculants and we have 50 years experience in this subject. So uh, farmers um, are common to use uh, bacteria and uh, the, the seed treatment. So, but uh, we classify it like inoculants and not biofertilizer. And when this microorganism uh, has some action in function to stimulate uh, physiological process or response for plant extress, they are classified as biostimulants. So we have a, 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 a very close difference between inoculants and biostimulants, because biostimulant could be more the, the function and not the product. So we have a little difficulty when the companies came with new products to identify exactly the function because inoculant is specific for for crops is a specific crops for soybean for uh, corn and biostimulant is in general for a, a, any any crop 
So biofertilizer, that is a third <laughs> classification in Brazil, in do not contain microorganisms. Biofertilizer for us just are compounded by uh, amino acids, humic substances, or uh, alga extracts. Just to give some idea here about the products registered, we have in the same, in the different categories, we have the same microorganisms. Here, the first, second, and third column, we have uh, inoculants. Inoculants can be uh, nitrogen-fixing bacteria, growth-promoting, or associative bacteria, like azospirillum, nowadays is registered in the both uh, of them, and is specific for, the, for crop like rice, corn, and nowadays is used for soybean too. Bradyrhizobium, that is our uh, most important uh, products in general, we have more than 700 products registered in this, with this uh, kind of uh, general and different species. And nowadays the new uh, products are based on bacillus, one, two, three, uh, five different bacillus in the same product. So it's a, a challenge for us to, to register because of the quality control of this product. We need to identify each one, quantify and uh, certificate that there is no, uh, no contamination in the product. So it's difficult to, to, to inspect this kind of production but the most of them are registered like biocontrol and some of them like uh, grow promoting. So the same product in the same factory could have different label uh, and the uh, recommendation. So this is the, the change for the companies to define the recommendation to choose the correct way of register in, in MAPA. The same for trichoderma, we have trichoderma for both uses, more for biocontrol than for like uh, grow promoting. And the phytosanitary organic farming is the same. The, the same product as can be used for uh, like grow promoting, can be used for biocontrol and can be used in the organic farming, just uh, based on the uh, specif uh, reference specification. Nowadays, we have uh, we have uh, a bill, uh, two two laws, project laws in the Congress, to unify this kind of sustainable products. So the idea here is to put together in the same uh, rule, phytosanitary products, nutritional products, based on microorganism or more sustainable. Uh, products. So it's our challenge nowadays and it uh, talks uh, too about the on farming production. So it's not simple uh, situation because we need to discuss the rules to produce it uh, on farm and how we will uh, inspect uh, this production and the, the use of this kind of products on farm. Uh, here I, I give some uh, further information. We have this AgroFit program that shows all products registered in Brazil for in phytosanitary area, and CP Agro is the system that show all the products registered like inoculant. Here we can see the companies, we can see the product, uh, raw material, uh, guarantees, everything is in public uh, for public consultant consultation. So uh, in, in the last one is our program, bio input program. Uh, you can find it in this QR code. It's to stimulate pro producers to, to use this kind of products. But uh, like an, I talked earlier, we have the law in discussion. So we need, first of all, the pub publication of the new law, 
of inputs to classify the, these products to like bio inputs. Nowadays, the, the name bio inputs is common in the market, but in fact, in the legislation and the, the registration, there is no uh, bio input with this name, but or inoculant or biostimulant or biopesticide but bio inputs is in general, there is no uh, specific classification. Thank you for your attention and I will be here for, for all day. <laughs>